What's up everybody, my name's Chance, and today we're hopping back into Historic Artesian because, again, as I said the other day, I'm really enjoying this event and uh, enjoying trying to come up with new decks for this event, most of all. So today we're going to be taking a look at an Explore deck in the Artesian format, and uh, before we go and hop into this deck deck or deck breakdown, as always, I would like to remind you, if you enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like down below and a comment in the comment section if you have any suggestions on this video, future videos, or past videos. Furthermore, if you're new here, consider subscribing. It's free. It's a great way to support the channel and get an update every time we put out a video, which is generally daily. Um, if you're looking to support the channel through a monetary means, you can hit the join button down below the video. It'll give you a list of perks you can acquire upon joining up. And last but not least, if you're looking to pick up some magic cards while supporting the channel, you can head over to tcgplayer.com and use the promo code you know spilkin. Now, on into what we're playing here. We actually have a, an explore package mixed with like an adventure deck, and it's it comes together kind of quite nicely, if I do say so myself. Um, so you have the Edgewall Keeper, the Falmir, the Order of Midnight, Lucky Clover, and Beanstalk Giants all coming from the Explore package, right? And all those do some fair uh, things for your deck. Order of Midnight allows you to return creatures from your graveyard, which is great because you have a lot of Enter the Battlefield creatures. So once you return them and play them back, you get that effect back, and it's fairly cheap. Falmir Knight allows you to draw cards for fairly cheap as well, as well as having a 1-1 Death Touch Defender, which is really, really good in a lot of situations. Edgewall Innkeeper can allow you to draw a card. And then aside from that, we have the Wild Growth Walker, Murphil Branch Walker, uh, Order of, or not Order of Midnight, I'm sorry, Seeker Squire and uh, Lurking Chupacabra uh, Explore Package alongside with Enter the Unknown to help us ramp up a little bit as well as uh, explore a little bit more. And then for some removal, we have four copies of Cast Down. <clears throat> I will say this, if you want some, some board wipe, by all means throw it in here. Your creatures for the most part will be bigger than, than what the board wipe will do. So if you're, if you're looking for, uh, well, hell, I can't seem to find it now. Uh, Cry of the Canarium, wherever it is, you know, there it is. Okay, if you're looking for some board wipe, this should do fairly well. Um, won't hit most of your things. It will hit your Edge Wall Keeper. It will hit your Falmir Knight. You know, keep that shit in mind. Um, but generally, it's going to be better on the trade for you because again, you have uh, you have ways of getting creatures down, ways of getting creatures back that are removed, not from Cry of the Canarium, but you know, from other means and all that. We do have two copies of Talons of Wildwood to give our creatures Trample, and we can return this to our hand once it goes to the graveyard, so it's really, really a pretty good card. Um, throwing Trample on your Beanstalk Giants or on some really, really big Wild Growth Walkers seems to end the game for me majority of the time. And then last but not least, we have this little one-off caveat biogenic upgrade, which is meant to, to really just explode, right? Like, game's been tied so far, back and forth. Use this on your wild growth walkers or in our, on any of your creatures that explored, right? You're going to be able to give them huge, huge amounts of counters. So, all in all, a fun deck, serious deck, not so much, but fun almost certainly. So, we're going to go on a hop right into our matches. Cable Greg, going to be our first foe for the day. Hmm. <laughs> what an interesting hand. Goblin Banneret. So they're probably going aggro if I had to, if I had to guess about it, right? Oh, my nose. I got like a, a sneeze in there. Or goblins. Maybe they're going going for goblins. Ooh, excuse me. My goodness. <laughs> uh, I am still waking up, so you know, y'all y'all gotta give me that little bit in the first start of the video to to really wake up. Um, butter, 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 butter. I'm fine with them just swinging in. They should buff the goblin banneret and then buff another little gobbo. Oh, right, because they didn't do it before they attack. Yep, that's a real, uh, real kick in the ass, isn't it? All right, we're gonna go ahead and get down another wild growth walker. And, uh, yeah, hi -ya. <laughs> Take that damage, you bitch, you. Now, if we draw into a land, I'm not going to lie, I'm probably going to go into the Lurking Choop, um, and we'll just wait to play the Branch Walker. But Lurking Choop allows us to kill the Banneret and, you know, future future problems. Ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. 
Ba-da, da 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 Just gonna let him keep on swinging in on us. Skirt Prospector. That's an interesting one. So they are playing Gabos. We did hit the land. My goodness. <laughs> well. <laughs> what, do you, what do you want me to do, okay? We got all these cards that play around the same thing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I turned in my chair and my... The arm on my chair is at literally the same height. Slain fire, what a bitch. Is literally the same height as my desk, so if I turn too much, it's like full-blown contact. Any hoosers, um... Murfolk, Branch Walker, Seeker, Squire. Both of those are really good. Both of them heal us up. They did take care of our lurking choop, but that's okay. So we're going to gain six life here, and then six more life here, so we're going to be above starting level. Even though we've sort of taken a thrashing, really, from this point so far. Now they're about to sacrifice some gobos to try and kill a wall growth walker. But it's going to take at least two goblins, right? Even with a slaying fire, like, that's still two goblins. Then you're down to two creatures, two cards in hand. You know, future's not looking bright. Future is not looking bright. <clears throat> and I don't really care about the wild growth walkers being taken away because we have the, uh, ooh, yes. <coughs> well, one, we have more of them. Two, we have we have the Order of Midnight, right? So we're, we can bring them back. So going to be swinging in with this wild growth walker. <clears throat> I need some water. Somebody. Help. <laughs> some mornings I remember, some mornings I don't. It's just, uh, just a matter of uh, remembrance, I guess. Anyways, Cable Greg. Yeah, that's that's what I figured. You don't spend, you don't blow up your whole board to remove one creature and then think that you can come back with a deck like goblins. That's just not how the game works, my friend. My boyo, we hit level one hundred, didn't we? Or is this level ninety nine? Oh, that's that's just a card sleeve. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, I like it. It looks cool. It's the, it's, it's the, what is that, Magic Mirror or something like that? Anyways, um, so cool, 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 cool. Game one being picked up. We're going to go and hop into a game two. Carl Marrier, going to be our second foe for the day, or Marrier. I think it's Marrier, though. Anyways, this looks like a fine hand, a fine hand indeed. Unfortunately, our opponent goes first, and in Magic, I really hate how how uh, uh, advantageous it is to go first they really should should look at that like whether it's whether it's the style of the cards which is going to be obviously a way bigger problem to fix because you have to wait until set rotates and then you have to wait till some of these other ones rotate because like this it's just I feel like it's actually a lose-lose, right? Because if you make it more fair for second player, or like for whoever's going second, based off how cards and how the flow of the game goes, right? Then games probably start taking way too long because you're making it to where they, they have to go longer, right? That's basically how you, you make it less bad for going second in, in the situation of changing the cards. Changing the actual gameplay mechanics is also scary because this game has been, you know, um, refined, so to speak, over the years. And uh, certainly they don't want to mess with that. So, Beanstalk Giant is pretty cool. <clears throat> Our opponent here is playing the whole little Soul Sisters uh, fun combo. You know. So we really need to get down Choop. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We just gotta hope they don't hit a Pride Mate or something, right? Absolutely have to hope for it. Fortunately, we do have Falmir Knights in the deck, so we can at least chum block with those. Like, those will scare the, uh, the Ajani's Pride Mates away. Thankfully. Hopefully, ideally. 
Yeah, what are you doing there, swinging all in? You got nothing. All right, lurking troop, come on down. I don't want to play the Falmir Knight. I may use it as card draw, and they don't have an Ajani's Pride made down yet, which means we don't need that blocker quite yet. So, bada bing, bada boom. Alrighty. Good game. Why are you saying good game? Because I'm about to remove all your important shit. Yeah, get out of here, Carl, Marrier, Marrier, whatever the hell your name is. I'm just gonna play the first half of that deck and then dip. Man, people in this game mode, they just don't stick around. That's really annoying. On to a game three. Miley, or Mal Ah. I think it's Miley. I think it's just a weird spelling of it. Anyways, it's gonna be our third foe for the day. Not a bad hand, and we could go first. Golden egg. Are they playing an artifact egg? That's something you don't see every day. That is something you don't see every day. I guess we'll go down into the forest because we have the biogenic upgrade. You never knew. And then, yeah, next turn we'll play Double Seeker Squire. Hopefully. Skilled animator. Ooh. Another card you don't see that often. <clears throat> so what we're going to do here is fairly obvious. We're going to play a Secret Squire. Ooh, yeah, we want to library that. Hell yeah. As long as Skilled Animator remains on the battlefield. Okay, so then what we can do is just cast down the Skilled Animator here. And bada bing bada boom, take the damage. And it's basically like they only dealt one point of damage to us thanks to the jungle hollow plus the wild growth walker. Another skilled animator. Oh, you just just full of all kinds of tricks, aren't you? <laughs> Alright, we'll get down El Lurking Tupacabra. Swing it with both of them, we'll at least get in two damage. Oh, they're gonna let both rod. Fantastic. Fantastic. Skilled Animator is only a three cost card. That's not too bad. Not too bad. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. If we get a land next turn, we can Biogenic upgrade our uh, our units. Oh. Or if we get another Explore creature, we can kill their Skilled Animator. It's not bad either. Or just some other uh, Explore aspect, I guess, rather. It doesn't even have to be a creature. Two mana away from the Beanstalk Giant. <clears throat> Animating Fairy. Okay, so they're just, they're just, their whole thing is bringing their, their artifacts to life. And I gotta say, it's pretty deadly. Ooh, that's, that's unfortunate for them. Fantastic for us, super unfortunate for them. So we're gonna gain some life here. Um, let's put a counter on the lurking troop if we can. Oh, nope, we hit a land. Get rid of that card, which gets rid of that card. Woo! Fantastic. We're going to keep the Wild Growth Walker back, actually, and then we're going to swing with these two because Wild Growth Walker can kill the Mon Stone. Feel like I'm talking about Infinity War or Avengers, you know? Mind Stone. Where's the Power Stone and all that shit? <laughs> also, we are up to seven lands now, so we can get down our Beanstalk Giant. If we can find a Talon of the Wild Woods, we can use that and uh, we'll pretty much just smash face, especially since we have the Biogenic Upgrade, which can go on our, uh, our Wild Ghost Walker. So yeah, actually if we can get a Talon of the Wild Woods, that I'm probably gonna use on the Wild Growth Walker, and then I'll worry about using the Biogenic Upgrade. So they're not gonna swing in this turn. Does that deal two damage to target creature? <clears throat> oh. That's unfortunate. 
That's super unfortunate for them. For us, it's fantastic. We'll operate that, sure. Yeah. That's a GG, baby. We didn't even have to use our biogenic, but we could have. And that's all that really matters. So game three being picked up, and that one I actually count as a victory. The other ones were like, okay, the opponent got tired of playing against you, so whatever. Anyways, uh, Rankle. Nice. We unlocked Rankle. Master of Pranks. So, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, tell you what, I am going to call it for today because I actually have to run Eva to work, uh, like, literally now, so... <laughs> Yeah, thanks everybody for watching. I'm sorry that uh, some of those games were just bleh, you know I guess I guess it's because it's an event and it's not an event that you can lose out on right? So the only thing people really care about is winning in the event. That's unfortunate as it may be um, I'm happy we actually got through a video today, and I didn't play an hour and a half match for no reason Absolutely no reason. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. if you did Please be sure to leave a like down below as always and uh, of course I'll either see you later tonight or tomorrow. Peace